as a father of three, um, I remember back to the days when I finally had uh, the ability to sleep through a night, and I'd wake up in the middle of the night actually concerned that um, my child was asleep, and I was worried, you know, is the child still breathing? Um, or during cough, cold, and flu season, the other end of the spectrum, where I was always a concerned parent wondering, um, you know, is, is my child's fever uh, spiking in the middle of the night? Um, so we have uh, capabilities to build wearable electronics that, for example, could sit on a young infant and measure both temperature and respiration. Our company is technology focused, so a lot of our uh, staff on site here um, are uh, focused on research and development, so building novel, stretchable, flexible electronic devices to solve uh, application uh, target focused uh, problems that are out there. MC10 was founded uh, in 2008, so we're about five years old, uh, really on the basis of Professor John Rogers' work at the University of Illinois. He's both uh, a scientific uh, innovator and a spark plug of innovation for the company, but probably more importantly, he's the inventor of all the stretchable electronic systems that we're commercializing for products here in the company. Uh, and based on that innovation, uh, he had a connection with an investor, uh, an entrepreneur here in the Boston area that uh, was a connector to two of the other co-founders. It's uh, a direction of research that's really motivated by an observation that all known forms of biology are soft, elastic, and curvilinear, whereas all known forms of electronic technologies are rigid, planar, and brittle. Uh, and as a result, if you want to integrate electronics with biology, with human skin or, or tissue, you have uh, severe challenges in a uh, mechanics mismatch and a geometrical form mismatch. The main problem that uh, has kind of grown out of MC10 over the past four to five years is how do we integrate electronics on the body in a way that's mechanically invisible to the user, or to, the, to the person wearing the electronic. Take our product, the Reebok Checklight, uh, which is uh, an accelerometer and gyroscope embedded uh, in a piece of textile that measures impact of the head. Here you have a whole category of youth athletes that are worried about head trauma uh, as they're playing contact sports. As a sport, football has um, uh, become very um, aware of these types of uh, injuries and so what we're doing is we're developing a solution that can be used to track it in kids and in uh, youth athletes and to be able to monitor um, severe impacts as well as short duration softer impacts that can build up over time. So this is the, the check light device uh, placed within the, 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 the beanie cap um, and it's ready to go. It's basically um, on, turned on and it uh, could be worn and so what, what I'm going to do is just put it on and typically your, your athlete on the football field would put it on and wear their helmet over it and the check light um, turns on behind. Uh, if there's a hit it'll light up and indicate that there was such an event that occurred. and That's basically how it works. A very simple device that provides a lot of feedback to coaches and athletes alike. So the reason why all conventional electronics are built on semiconductor wafers and not directly on rubber, uh, for example, for, for the kinds of devices that we're envisioning, is that the semiconductor wafer is a very good substrate for supporting the kinds of high temperature processing steps that are needed to build semiconductor devices. And uh, the printing process that we use allows those devices to be built on the wafer and then subsequently lifted off of the wafer in very thin formats and then printed down onto a rubber substrate where we actually build our device. Today we take for granted the fact that we carry around a mobile device with us with, with great computing power and, and social applications. Ten years ago that, that wasn't the case. Um, and I think if I look forward a decade or you know maybe longer um, and I think about that natural progression of marrying electronics with the human body maybe somebody in an elderly segment that uh, experienced a heart attack or um, some sort of uh, cardiac event your heart naturally beats at a regular rhythm uh, once you uh, unfortunately experience a cardiac event you start to see irregularities in, in that beat as your heart is healing we can create a monitor that naturally interfaces with human tissue measures that heart, re heart rate and can proactively signal when you might see something that's out of the norm. Uh, again, maybe a wireless uh, alert to your smartphone where that um, person can now proactively um, call a healthcare provider. So instead of moving to a very costly, high touch, expensive healthcare environment, they actually can proactively monitor their health in their own home. 
We think that'll keep people healthier over a longer period of time and also lower the cost of administering healthcare.